We are now the proud owners of 65 half-filled quarts of paint. <laughs> so I move them downstairs in the winter, I move them upstairs in the summer. Yeah. There are requirements. The four requirements for the boards are that they should be seen from the road, since we want public art, and it is a community service project of the Florence Women's Club. They be located in Boone County, no block be duplicated, and that should be easy because you can see from these books there are over 5,000 named blocks. So you ought to be able to find one you like. And finally, that we can use the images to publicize the Barn Quilt Trail, such as in the brochure, the website, and newspaper articles. You'll remember I said the Florence Women's Club, being a 501c3 nonprofit, allowed me to go after grants. I approached Toyota and found out I had to complete a 20-page grant proposal. Has anyone, oh, that was terrible, terrible, yeah. terrible. Uh, I had first decided to ask them for $700, which would cover the cost of two boards, two eight by eight boards, uh, to give to people who wanted a board but couldn't afford it. Then I thought, in for a penny, in for a pound. So I asked for $10,000. <laughs> Uh, the, the purpose was to, to uh, uh, produce these brochures. The worst they could do was say no. Uh, maybe no forever. <laughs> well, in the end, they awarded the project $2,500, way more than the original $700 I was planning to ask for. Then, al along with the Bank of Kentucky and Fisher Homes donations, plus the Florence Women's Club $500, was enough to print up 5,000 four-color brochures. And uh, we have now gone through those, and uh, we raised more money and got 3,500, and I was looking today, and we have just over 1,000 left. Then I've got to start worrying again. <laughs> so let's get to some barn boards. Um, I don't think we have to turn the lights down. No. OK. Um, shall I tell you when? Or sh Okay. Uh, many blocks have several names, and as I've said, I'm using the one most familiar to the Kentuckians. Many people choose red, white, and blue for their boards. And I'm thrilled with that, but also appalled because red takes four coats of paint for a good coverage. And you, should, you have a damp spring that paint never dries. So, the board we're looking at right now belongs to Virginia Adams. She chose Texas Broken Star because she was reminded of the Starry Nights. Her mother, Lucy Allen, was a teacher, but in her spare time, she and Virginia made and sold quilts. Virginia and her husband, Harold, bought this farm from her Aunt Reba Sister in 1966. I'm trying to add a little bit of this for you men who've lived here all your lives and you might recognize some names. It was previously owned by other relatives, such as her cousins, the Becknells, going back a hundred years. I've driven by her house several times in the summer, and she sits on her porch and waves at the cars as they slow down to view her barn board, and it really makes me feel good when I see that. Um, no, okay, I just got an email this afternoon saying that uh, Judy and uh, Jerry Biedenhorn were coming back from Gettysburg so they wouldn't be here tonight, but this is their star, Liberty Star, first published in 1855, a very old blog. They both love American history. Judy is a member of the Ladies Living Social His History of Cincinnati where they dress up in period costumes. And Jerry is interested particularly in the Civil War. She said for me to say they go to the Gettysburg three or four times a year, and so they are actually on the road right now coming back from Gettysburg, so that proves the point. Okay. Karen and Jim Lee got this block, Army Star, because their son-in-law is in the service. It was created by two soldiers during World War II. They were quoted as saying their efforts were, and I quote, in appreciation of the many thoughtful deeds of American women for soldiers, unquote. The block first appeared in the Kansas City Star during World War II. Okay. 
This is a location where I cold called the barn owner because his barn was located high on a hill with no trees around it. This was my first encounter with a junkyard dog. <laughs> this project has really made me appreciate mail carriers who do deal with dogs every day. Um, Bob Reeves said he'd think about it. Later he called and said no. Sometime later he called back and said yes because his barn was freshly painted. And you can tell it's a beautiful white barn. So we hung an Ohio Star variation. Uh, pardon me. A member of the Austin Healy Car Club had seen an article in the Inquirer about our project and they offered to pay for a board. So this is the only time someone else picked out the block, not the owner. After it was all painted, I sent the car club member an email with a photo of the barn attached. I always do that because if there's something they don't like, I can't fix it when we're out in the field about to put it up on the barn. So I, I did that and he replied, oops. I don't like to hear oops. <laughs> The female members of the club had wanted blue in the design as well, and he had forgotten to get back to me. So I tried some blue to the four corners, and that's why we call it variation. And I think Linda called it Swamp Angel, but I like, uh, I like the Ohio star variation better. You should have told him not to paint it. We wouldn't have cared. Is that right? <laughs> it would have been all right. Huh? Yeah, it would have been fine. Oh, okay. George Ripberger's sister bought this Stars and Stripes board for him for his birthday. The timing was just right for the Florence Women's Club because we were able to use it in the Florence, uh, Florence Memorial Day Parade bef uh, before we hung it on, on the barn. So it, the timing was perfect. Okay. This is an example of an agritourism farm. Now they raise alpacas after receiving advice from Jerry Brown. The block is called Sugarloaf and dates back from 1860. Linda Salisbury had an antique table runner with this pattern. After painting the block like the one in the runner, I emailed her the image as usual. She emailed me back that it was too bland. So I added plaid to the background, dipped dots to the ecru color, and she was happy. And after it was done, I totally agree with her. She was absolutely right. Okay. The children bought their dad at Houston samples, this Four Winds board, for his birthday. They thought it was a fitting block since their property catches every breeze in the county. Over time, several of the outbuildings have been blown down or damaged. He particularly liked that the blue was UK blue. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Okay. Janet Seabury picked out the sunbeam block. A sunbeam block, as you might expect, is usually done in oranges, yellows, and sometimes reds. But Janet doesn't like orange. So she chose red, white, and blue. And it turned out very pretty, but it is called sunbeam. I haven't told you how I get the barns. Sometimes people will call or email me, but most of the time I drive around the county looking for good barns and uh, they can be seen from the road. At least half the time they say no, but the ones who say yes have great locations. And that was the case with Selma Conrad who chose Waterwheel. Don't go away, that's it. <laughs> She said during the flood of 37, her father and uncle saw lumber floating down the river. Upstream, a lumber yard probably had been inundated. They got a little fishing boat and went out into the river to capture the lumber. They did it over and over again, even though neither one of them knew how to swim. Selma said they had enough lumber to build a barn and several outbuildings that are still there. <laughs> John D. Smith's friend, Cassette Spill, bought this country patriotic flag block, and she found this design on the internet. And for all of you people here, please don't look in the internet. <laughs> um, call me first. I've got a lot of books, and some of the ones on the internet are, are hokey, and they've got funny names, and they've just been created, and it's really a lot more fun when you get one that's been around for a while. 
uh, Shannon Guest bought her family the George Buttigs a quilt board called Best of All. They have owned this 350-acre farm for 20 years. Uh, before that, it was owned by R.C. Durr. Butch and Mary Ann Wainscott chose the Crossroads board for their barn on Bellevue Road. Their daughter, Maggie, wanted money for college, so they hired her to hand brush the barn red. This was in 2010, that horribly hot summer. She did the three sides and left the back that couldn't be seen from the road <laughs> unpainted. She has now graduated from college, and as far as I know, that back of the barn has still not been painted. <laughs> uh, okay. Suzanne and her son Samuel Burris designed this block, so it's an original, and they call it Liberty Compass. Her husband Gary wrote, and I quote, with all that is going on in the world today, it is sometimes hard for people to recognize the freedoms they enjoy living in the United States of America, unquote. And uh, he, they put their barn up about six years ago, so it still holds true, doesn't it? Uh, of course, we do use colors other than red, white, and blue. Um, many, many quilt blocks are stars, probably more than anything else. I'm going to speed up a little since I feel such a responsibility to show lots of blocks um, for people tonight, and I don't want to leave your block out if you have one. But then again, just how long can we sit? <laughs> so, one of the first boards we put up was for Pat and Tom O'Hara. Since they didn't have a large barn, we hung an eight-pointed star on their shed door, and it worked out just fine. Okay. Tracy and David Beck chose Hunter's Star because they liked to hunt, and they said if we couldn't find one for hunting, they liked stars. Well, lo and behold, there is a block called Hunter's Star. Okay. Someone was telling me that they really love this one. I do, too. Patty Burkle's children bought this starry path block um, in her memory. Okay. This Star of the Bluegrass was copied from a Dinsmore homestead quilt. If you haven't visited this farmhouse, you should. It's filled with furniture, clothing, everything you can imagine from the 1840s. One family lived there the whole time, and they never threw anything away. So uh, they do give tours in the summertime, and I highly recommend it. It's just down on 18. It won't take you any time at all to get there. Okay. I've been meaning to go get another picture of this board because it's kind of fuzzy. Uh, Tammy and Rod Collins chose this Lemoyne star block and had it hung on their house. So if you don't have a barn, there are other things we could do. Okay. Marlene and Daryl Ford had me sketch out the designs on three different boards, and then Marlene added the color. This one is called Rolling Star Block. Debbie and Bill Highland chose Grandmother's Choice. By the way, there are over 25 blocks with some form of grandmother in the name. I just bet you didn't know that. Okay. Nancy and Peter Blackmore chose this block because it was his favorite evening star. So when you go to Jane's Saddlebag and look, up, look at the big tall black barn and that's, it's up in the peak. Mary Johnson picked out Kentucky Star. You'll notice a lot of people picked out blocks that had the name Kentucky in them, and I think that's really neat. This one is called Kentucky Star. And I can't zoom past this one. Uh, Mary was told the little house, the little cabin that is incorporated into the bigger house on Botts Lane dates back to the 1820s. They were told it was a greenery before the Civil War. As far as we can go back, the property was owned by John W. and Mary Gaines in the 1880s, then George and Dorothy Voschel, then Rachel G.S.C.U.W.I.N.G. Schwind. 
then Botts Hill Farms, then Alma and Joyce Dickerson. I did this for Bruce Ferguson, and he's not here tonight. <laughs> uh, and then it was uh, bought, uh, bought by the Johnsons. Okay. Marilyn and Tom Leathers picked out Shooting Star, and he's the one that loves quilts in the family, and he remembers playing underneath the quilt rack when he was a child. This, this shows you, I thought you ought to see what the when electric people do. So this is a shot of them on ladders and uh, with a cherry picker truck. Um, but as I said, it takes three. You, you can see right now they're putting the yellow strip or trim up, and that's one of the things that Butch does. 61. <laughs> okay, next one. Bob and Glenna Moorhead's daughter-in-law, Holly, painted two boards for them. This one is called Kentucky Star Variation. These are the Moorheads who had the Moorhead Boat Harbor and Restaurant until a tornado flipped the barge over uh, that it was riding on, so that was the end of that. Okay. Belva and Jimmy King were given this summer star flower by their nephew, Farrell Turner, because he said the kings were so hard to buy for. So. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, Brenda and Joe Parker picked out Amish Broken Star, and I sometimes call it Carpenter's Square, and it was painted by her 86-year-old uncle for them. Okay. Fran Piper has two blocks. This one is Cherokee Star. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that it looks like it's not against the barn, and it isn't. It's, uh, it's uh, planted out uh, on uh, <coughs> wooden stakes. Four by fours. Four by fours. Um, and, and she had someone put it into the ground. If you put it into the ground, we'll give you a board, but we don't know how to. We don't want to dig a hole. <laughs> okay, next. Jean and Ed Moorhead picked out this variable star block because Ed likes red. And according to Don Goldsmith, quote, historians say the pattern variable star in a flurry of patriotism toward the individual states in 1815 were renamed Ohio Star. The um, Moorhead's prefab barn was built in the late 1800s in Virginia. Then it was floated down the Ohio River um, and landed at Hamilton Landing in Boone County. Then the parts were hauled up Big Bone Church Road by horse and wagon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a pegboard. And uh, until just a few years ago, they could say that there were no nails and no screws in it. But recently, two different cars going very fast, turning around the curb, have plowed into the barn, so now it has a few nails and a few screws. Okay. Uh, the first board in Boone County was Gary Wilmhoff's Kentucky Twinkling Star. He has another one just down the road called Turkey. That's the last of the star boards. But we have other beautiful blocks. <laughs> Fran and Fred Baum were gifted Country Roads by relatives. You'll understand the name Country Roads if you go there because they live way back. Ryle Road, you know, the one that's falling into the river. Yeah. They wanted a board bright enough so that the people across the way in Indiana could see it. And indeed they can. And for those interested in this kind of thing, there is a Grimsley Family Cemetery on the property. Um, okay. Alfred Setter's board is the one Licking Valley Quilt Guild paid for, ladies. Um, it looks quite a bit like their logo. It was the closest uh, we could, uh, legitimate block we could use to get to their logo, and it is called Interlocked Rings. Okay. This was an oops barn on my part. Bruce Ferguson said I could pick out the colors and block for his barn. He didn't care. I chose corn and beans 
because they have a corn maze in the fall. I painted it blue and green because I liked that side of the color wheel. Later I read in an old quilt history book that this block is always painted yellows and greens. So at least I got one right. <laughs> okay. This was the first board I did back in 2007. Um, Margaret and Bob Maurer chose Bear's Paw. In Vermont, it's called Duck's Foot in the Mud. <laughs> Guess they have more ducks than bears there. Uh, and Bob is the farmer who raises hair sheep. Gary Wilmhoff had so much tr trouble. 